Hi all, welcome to the first part of the video lecture on combinational circuits. So this is basically your third module. So in the second module we saw the Boolean function, its implementation as well as its minimization using K-map and those things we discussed. Right now we are moving on to the realization of the circuit, the actual circuit design part. So we will start with something called the combinational circuit. Uh, this is actually general name. So what are all the uh, circuits that we are going to implement in your third module is basically combinational circuits. We, we will see that what it is. So right now it's just a definition. So what is a combinational circuit and uh, versus something called a sequential circuit. So we will just see an overview of it and more details of it you will understand over time. Okay, after uh, completing the topics and all. So initially I thought of starting with the uh, comparison of these two. So this is the first one. So if you are uh, not comfortable with this video just uh, skip it and go to the remaining part and after that you can come back to this and that time it will be clear for you yeah so because it is just a definition kind of thing so you will see the examples and all in this upcoming videos yeah so a combination circuit is what it is consists of an interconnection of logic gates so you know what is logic gate right so many standard gates we already uh, cam, uh, come across right like uh, and the fundamental gates what are all fundamental gates the AND gate OR gate and NOT gate and uh, of course other gates especially the universal gates like NAND NOR etc and using them uh, if you interconnect such gates and you are implementing some uh, circuits that is what we can call as a combination circuit in general in sequential circuit also same thing is happening but slightly different so combination uh, logic gates react to the uh, value of the signal at their input and produce the value of the output signal so transforming the binary information from the given input data to the output data so you can see this typical block diagram so some n inputs are apl applied maybe some n boolean variables right like i'm applying boolean variable a1 a2 etc and so why i am calling it as boolean variable because it can assume uh, the boolean values that is true or false only right so you know using n variable how many um, assignments are possible for this n input you know there are two power n uh, assignments um, i mean in input combinations possible right or two power uh, n assignments are possible so how it's like uh, all can be false uh, or simply or can be 0 or can be 1 0 0 0 1 like that so those things you know from the true table so this combinator circuit uh, on the background it is uh, it is going to represent some kind of a boolean function say having an input right so you can represent it using a true table now when it comes to a circuit the, uh, the so far for boolean function you know it is uh, ju it's just giving you a single output right as uh, the output is a function of all the input variables something like that but here you can expect some m different output now you can see that each of this output may be let me call it as the output 1 output 2 etc some m outputs are given right Th this first output itself is a function of all the n, a n variable something like this so it's a you can uh, visualize it as a function of n, n variable or a boolean algebraic expression of n variable similarly the second output is also a function of all these n uh, variables something like this right so how this function and there will be a true table corresponding to this right so for this this particular function there is a true table one for this one there is another two table right so like that for the last one also we have a two table a1 a2 etc some n variable function uh, i am having and equivalently uh, on the background i have a two table and this two table you know you can realize uh, you can represent the two table like a k map you can simplify and for each of this output expression you you can come up with a minimal sum of product or the product of some realization so that is what the, what we discussed so far right now the um, the n input binary variables come from an external source right some from external so when it comes to a real circuit we don't know from where that inputs are coming maybe uh, as an output of some pre previous uh, circuit something like that some external uh, inputs are applied like that for the time being you can uh, imagine and the output variables are produced by the internal combination circuit and go to the external destination so it, this output further i will be applying for some other circuit or as input to some other circuit or something uh, as I need. So some n external inputs are coming and they are being converted to some m outputs. So by the combination circuit. So internally it is a com complex circuit made up of different logic gates that's all. So uh, like uh, we already seen using that n variable 2 power n possible combinations of the inputs are possible. So for each possible input there is one possible value as the output right uh, for the output and you can visualize this each of this m output uh, Mm, outputs as a boolean function so you, you can on the background you can think of some m boolean function and each function is of uh, having n inputs right 
so that about a common circuit can be specified so uh, for equivalently we have a true table representation also so everything is clear now right now some of the examples of this combination circuit and right now we don't know about it add us so for the time being you can think of it like uh, some inputs are given and it is going to do the addition particularly the binary addition you know how the binary addition is done now we are going to do the see the circuit that can do it right similarly the subtractors sometimes uh, whether two inputs are equal or not see uh, in uh, programs and all you may be doing all those things right so on the background these circuits are going to help you for that um, so you may write like uh, if a equal to equal to b then do something so how this comparison is happening on the background using a boolean um, expression of course implemented using some combination circuit we, we are going to see that similarly you are just writing a plus b uh, some uh, 10 plus 20 1 so how this addition is doing uh, happening on the backgrounds that is what we are going to see there is something called a decoder encoder multiplexer demultiplexer etc so all these are very standard um, circuits and they find a number of application especially in the cpu design and in many other cases networking everywhere you can see their application and we will see one by one in detail okay so that is the whole thing we are going to see in the third module so the diagram of a combination circuit has logic gates with no feedback paths so there is something called a feedback path so whether we are having a feedback path or not that depends okay so the diagram uh, of a combination circuit has a logical gate um, connected without any uh, yeah so in general um, you have to keep this in mind so if it is a combination circuit there is no feedback path at all so feedback path is something like a loop see uh, so what is a feedback path it's a connection from output of one gate so this is uh, a particular gate say I, I don't know maybe some anti gate or gate something right the uh, this is the input and this is the output right the output of one gate to the input of the second gate this is another gate so i have to get gate one and gate two so output of this one is this is the output right this is being connected as the input of this one and uh, whose output forms the part of the input of the first gate something like this so, so th this is a kind of uh, feedbacking right so the output i am connecting back to the input so i it may result into a loop or not here you can clearly see some kind of a loop but whether it is re re resulting in a loop or not in general feedback means output of something given as input to the same one or something different okay something like that okay so, so this is one way another way of feedbacking is so you know the same output you can feed as input to the same circuit this is also fine so this way or this way anyway some kind of looping is happening on the background so something like that may or may not be there in any logical circuitry if it is absent definitely it is a combinatorial circuit the main special the combinatorial circuit is such a feedback path, path will not be there so next we will see something called a sequential circuit so that the main difference of that is uh, the one containing such a feedback path is what we call as a sequential circuit so and some other things also so that, that about it anyway this uh, the i mean the next module in fourth module you will completely see sequential circuit so one by one we will explore so this is just an overview only and details one by one mean maybe after finishing this third and fourth uh, module completely you will get the correct meaning of all the things we discussed here okay so right now as a beginning point i thought of uh, starting like this yeah mm, sequential circuit is what so the main thing is that it can uh, so basically it's a, a extension of the combination circuit only so on th there will be a combination circuit to which we will add something called a storage element so storage elements are not there in case of uh, combination circuits in the combination circuit if you add storage element which can remember something right this is what we call as a sequential circuit now the storage element and the combination circuit together that memory right so, so something that happened right now i have to remember right so that ha happening should be given as a feedback to me then only i can remember what happened right now right so it involves a feedback path also something like that so storage elements are the devices that are capable of storing binary information so so whether it can remember something or not so uh, currently um, i given some input to particular gate and it's done something and it is having an output now after some time whether it is capable of retaining what is what it what it done right now maybe it typically we are uh, going to control the security circuit with something called a clock so in the current clock cycle i, I have something in the next clock cycle whether it remember it or not so that is the way we are judging them so the binary information stored in these um, elements at any given time defines the state so we can call it as this is a current state and uh, after uh, some time it will move to the next state so 
next state actually depends on the current state also something like that so current state some feedback will be there and that feedback as well as the fresh input together determines the next state so that is the idea okay so it's interesting we will see that with the examples only this concept will be clear right right now you can visualize something that is capable of remembering things okay so some uh, looping is there the current uh, output is coming as input to the uh, same circuit and uh, it is producing a new output and which is actually now depending on the uh, current input as well as the previous output something like that so so far uh, when it comes to combinational uh, combinational circuit right combinational circuit this is my current input right current input and this is the I mean something like a current uh, output just like input as coming as the output that is all. Now in case of sequential circuit the current in input is applied for sure and it is giving you some output right and this output itself is coming as a feedback to the same circuit. So, what is happening? So, it is not like a first this input will be transformed by the circuit to some output in the current clock. Now, in the next clock cycle that output will come, come back here. So, I can call it as the previous output right. right. So, the, the current currently I am getting an output and that is something depend on the previous output something like that. So, uh, if I am determining so typically I will use something called a clock also. The first clock cycle uh, may be previous output may be absent because I am just starting and that is my starting point. The current input is converted to some output right. Now, in the next clock cycle uh, what happened in the first clock cycle? First clock cycle the input is converted to output. Now, in the second clock cycle the first clock cycle's output is given as input for the same circuit. So, this is what I am calling as a previous input. So, let me uh, make it more clear um, by writing something called uh, this output on the um, n plus 1 clock is actually depending on the previous output that, that means output on the n the clock cycle and the current input. So, together I will be getting output on the n plus 1 the clock something like that. So, this is a general overview. Okay. So, this kind of a feedbacking as well as memory. So, if I have to take this and give uh, hand over here. So, actually here uh, some kind of memorizing is happening right. Some additional circuit is going to help you. So, how the I will take this and remember this and I will apply for the next clock cycle. So, that is uh, with the help of some memory element. So, this kind of a memory element is absent in case of combinatorial circuit, but it is there in the sequential circuit. Okay. So, these external input also determines the condition for changing the state um, I mean the external input means this current input or what is coming from the external world right. So, external input is nothing but the current input is what I mentioned. So, bo both are together determining it the past the previous output as well as the current input together determines the current output that is the thing where in case of uh, combination circuit there is no dependency with the previous output it is purely depending on the current input only. So, that is the main thing. So, uh, something like this. So, how this feedbacking is happening with the help of some memory element on the background because it has to remember what happened in the end cycle and it should be given as input to the n plus 1 cycle. So, block diagram demonstrate that the output in the sequence circuit as a function not only of the input but also on the present state of the storage element. Uh, I mean uh, the next state the present state is as well as a present input next input determines the next output something like that okay so uh, maybe for a clarity you can remember like the previous state also i mean what i, I was trying to say so here you, one way is like uh, the n plus on the clock cycle is depending on the n the clock cycle output so uh, say same thing you can visualize in a different way also output in the n the clock cycle is depending on the um, output of the n minus on the clock cycle right both are conveying the same thing right. So, that is why so here either you can say that in the next uh, state output depends on the present state output or the present output depends on the past uh, uh, output or the previous output both are fine or the state in, in different ways you can uh, de define it. The next state of the storage element is also a function of the external input as well as the present input. The sequence circuit is specified by a time. So, typically that clocking is what we call as this time sequence of input output and the internal states. So, all those things are determining right the next state where in combination so it depends only on the present value of the input also only. 
now for just a quick comparison so why i uh, given this kind of a table is like a see i just uh, try to highlight these things so the quick comparison between the combination circuit and the sequential circuit right see it's uh, very important and uh, repeatedly asking university question so what is the first thing uh, the output depends on the present input only right but here the output depends on the the output depends on the present input here the output depends on the present as well as the past input right so th that is what we see now the second thing what about the speed you can see that here uh, combinator circuit is faster uh, compared to sequential circuit um, why because here there is no feedbacking right the i mean uh, this feedback circuit and taking the past uh, um, or the previous output those things are making this a little bit slower because i have to feedback so that will take um, the from the memory i have to take things and i have to process them that will take time so this is faster now what about the design you can see that where this is slow where the, uh, when you are looking at the design you can see a very um, e easy implementation here the, this is designed in a very complex way okay because definitely that again that feedback circuit is making it complex and here there is no feedback path right so um, use a different color here there is no feedback path but here there is a feedback path right now um, this is actually independent of the time time independent because there is no dependency with the clock and all right here it is depend on the time so like that many differences are given just go through it and uh, what is the basic uh, elementary building block here you can see that it is purely based on logic gates but here some memory elements are coming in addition to the logic gates and these memory elements are nothing but the flip flops right we will see that what is flip flop uh, uh, latches and also they, they are actually the uh, basic implementation of uh, so called um, sequential circuit right logic gates are also there now this is uh, typically used for arithmetic and boolean operation like adders and all right but here mainly uh, this is for uh, storing of the data yeah commercial circuit um, they don't have the capability to store any state right but here uh, they don't have any capability but here they have the capability to store earlier states so that is why they are depending on the previous output right as combination circuit don't have any clock so here there is no uh, clock they don't need any triggering but here it depends on uh, clock right so these circuits do not have any memory element so there is no memory element but here you know there is memory element right this part is there and the examples are like uh, so these are all uh, again uh, very important Let's see what are all the examples the encoders decoders all are very important we will see one by one and their implementation everything and here it is flip flops and uh, generally counter ship registers many things are there right so hope you get an overall idea about uh, this combinational as well as sequential circuit see so that about it so this is a just qu a quick overview i'm repeating again and we will see the circuits one by one and that time it will be very clear and after uh, finishing the third as well as fourth module completely you please come back to this it will be very clear to you right and, and right this is our starting point so that is why we are just seeing the definition without seeing examples and all and after some time it will be very clear to you yeah thanks for watching